full pads. Uh, I like the way our kids approached it. It's the habits we needed to get back to tackling and the fundamentals. Obviously preparing for a very good 9-3 Nebraska football team. Uh, tomorrow is going to be a very, very special day. Uh, go on the Rocky Top Sports Complex in Gatlinburg and uh, sign autographs for elementary age uh, kids. Uh, they've done some things with some invitations and that's the least that we can do. And once that's done, then we'll go into uh, Gatlinburg and we'll have our t annual team dinner. And then I'll spend about an hour out on the streets and let our kids enjoy that. And that community means so much to us. And Jim Ogle is such a great friend of the program and personally. And so we're looking forward to that time and spending time uh, with everybody in Gatlinburg. So answer your question. Sorry. Had some guys um, that already have been to Gatlinburg. You had a number of players graduate this past Friday. What do you think that says about the um, culture of place here in Tennessee and how much you guys, are, I guess, how good you feel about it, how much you feel like it's set up for the future? Well, it is set up for the future. We always talk about consistency and sustained success, and that's what we're building this football program on. And, uh, you know, all you have to do is look at the weight room and look at the number of players. You guys see it in practice. You know, it's, you know, I understand there was an article that came out with many unnamed sources, and, you know, I don't stand for anybody attacking our football program because it's untrue, and uh, it's very, very unfortunate. And I take that personal. I know our players take it personal, and everyone in our football family takes it personal. And there's so many positive things going on here with our players. You look at recruiting right now, that's a byproduct of our players being our best ambassadors. You look how far we've come in the program. Have we had some setbacks this year? Absolutely. But uh, I think this football team has overcome a lot of obstacles and adversity. And that's really what you find out about people is adversity times and adverse situations and how do they respond and you know again it's very very unfortunate but I'm never going to let anybody attack our football program that doesn't know our football program. This will be the third year in a row that you've taken the team to Gallenberg during the, the bowl practice schedule and all of that. I mean, could you speak a little bit more about maybe how special that area is? I think you've had some coaches retreats there as well too. It's very very special in you know Gatlinburg and the entire state of Tennessee and Again, the more that we can get our players out in this great state and you know get them around our great fan base and the people and be able to give back to the community, and that's where the 5,000 hours of community service come in. And uh, so much of just giving back to everyone who supports us. And if we can brighten a day, if we can put a smile on a youngster's face, that's what life is all about. Which did you talk about the physical nature of practices? You wanted them to be a little more physical. Yeah. You've seen evidence of that. Today was, and we need to get back to our style of playing, our physicality, and a pride of who we are, and you know, again, our habits. And uh, we still have a long ways to go. You can see that you know, we've had a week off, but I really like the approach of our players, but it's something that we demand uh, in our football program every day. And it's like I told our players, you come to the University of Tennessee to win football games and graduate with a degree. Everything else is extra. But make no mistake about it, you come to the University of Tennessee to get your degree and you win football games. And that's the standard and expectations in our football program. I've liked the way our players have responded so far. Yeah, were you confident that you could improve the tackling from the end of the regular season for the bowl game? It's a process, but we're going to do more tackling uh, than we ever have in terms of bowl preparation. And, uh, you know, it's a balancing act because you want to be fresh for the bowl game, too. But, uh, you know, when you look at the bowl games as the bowl season starts, it's usually dictated by special teams, by turnovers, and by tackling. And, uh, you know, the last couple bowl games that we've won, we've excelled in those areas. And this is going to be a great challenge. You're playing a team that is ranked top seven in the country for a number of weeks. And uh, they're very, very talented, and they're very, very physical. And it's going to take everything that we have. Coach Jayshon said that the Vanderbilt loss among the players isn't going to be forgotten, I guess, anytime soon. Do you mind that that's maybe some motivation for them? Yeah, they shouldn't forget it. Uh, everyone in our football program shouldn't forget it, from myself to coaches to everyone. And again, it's a standard and expectation in our football program, and our players understand, and that's part of the culture. They know why they're here. They, they understand, and they take great pride in the football program, but it gets back to, again, we're here to win football games and graduate and be successful people future endeavors. Can you liken Nebraska to any opponents you've played and how much will you educate your players about Nebraska and their tradition right now? They don't seem to know a lot about sure. it. Well, I think growing up in football, you know, you know a little bit about their tradition and their history. And the exciting thing about this bowl game is it's two tradition-rich 
football programs going at it, but all you have to do is put the video on and you see a football team that's very, very disciplined. They do not beat themselves. They make you earn every yard on offense and they, they prey on you making mistakes. And then defensively, same thing. You know, they're an offense that's very, very physical, can make the big play, so it's going to take everything that we have. With these bowl practices, how do you balance preparing for the game itself and then getting ready for the next season? And also, I was wondering, if you're not in a bowl, how do you kind of use these December weeks to take out? Well, I've only been in that situation twice in my career. And, uh, all I can speak of is our first year, we didn't go to a bowl game, and if you talk to uh, all the players in our program, they thought that was the turning point because we went right back to work that following Monday in the weight room, and we got after it in our off-season strength and conditioning program, and they all knew that part of building this, this program back is Tennessee football's top five in all-time bowl appearances, and that's our standard and our expectation in terms of you know developing your young players uh, for next year and your current team. It is a balancing act, but make no mistake about it, we're practicing to compete and win the bowl game, which is going to be a great challenge but we sprinkle in youth development. The thing right now is a lot of our youth are playing right now. So you're getting youth development just through the course of practice time. What, what do you look uh, for specifically on, on youth development, the quarterback situation? What are you looking for them? They're having those two young guys this month, I'm just jobbing the last game. What do you look for out of them? Do you start to evaluate it as a competition this month with those guys? We evaluate every day. And it's not just the quarterback position, but it's the offensive line, it's the young DBs, it's, it's everything, it's our linebackers. We evaluate every single practice, so it's not just the quarterbacks, but in terms of the quarterback position, we're looking for consistency. Just who manages the line of scrimmage, uh, who makes plays. Uh, and again, it's not just the team settings. Everyone's being evaluated in individual drills, routes on there, everything that goes into it. And all of our quarterbacks are very, very competitive. I see the excitement because they're gaining more repetitions. And you know, it's one thing to take the mental reps, but you really got to go through it. And you can't learn how to swim if you don't get to do that. And that's what they're going through right now. So I think they're just excited about the amount and the volume of repetitions. Hey, Butch, on the offensive line, Dylan's back, and obviously Benzel, I found as well last couple How do you manage that group? Do you want to have your five right now? And know going all bowl prep who it is, or do you feel like you want to let that play out? Let it play out. It's all about competition. And I've been uh, really, really pleased with that group. And I think what you saw throughout the course of the year is we've recruited some depth there, and we were over, able to overcome some adversities there with injuries. I think we started seven or eight different lineups within the offensive front, and that's a byproduct of it takes time to recruit and develop, but that's one position that we've been able to overcome that because of the hard work of that entire group. We talk about power of the position, and they've, they've done that. But again, it's all about competing, and we don't have to name a starting five until game day. Coach, a little bit on the periphery here, but Lane Kiffin was introduced on at Fort Atlantic. He used brick by brick, and that's something that you've kind of made famous here, or made popular here. Where did that come from for you, and I guess what's your reaction to a former Tennessee coach snagging your catchphrase? Well, everyone, you know, whatever it takes to build their program, but brick by brick, uh, I was on the phone one day and I was watching them lay the foundation, the brick of, of the steps outside my office, and I was watching the diligence that goes into laying the brick, and I thought, it's, it's the foundation, and we're gonna build a foundation that can stand the test of time, that can weather adversity, uh, and if one brick is out of place or if one brick is missing, you're not gonna have a strong foundation and it doesn't look right. Every brick is symbolic of every person within our football program. That's why we still give out bricks uh, when we start training camp with the brick by brick mentality. So that's where that was born and then it kind of was confirmed when I was talking to John Gruden. He said, hey brother, just lay it brick by brick. And uh, so that kind of was confirmation on how we were gonna build this football program. You talk about guys that, that come in and work every day no matter whether it's things are good or are bad. Corey Green seems like he's always been one of those guys. What's, yes. his, what's his work ethic been since he's been in this program? First of all, consistent. Uh, very, very driven. Does the extra things that it takes to be a special player. And it's one thing to do what's required here. 
but if you want to be great, you have to do the more than what's required within this setting. And the amount of stretching he does at night, taking stretch bands home, if you tell him to hydrate, he's hydrating. You know, he has a routine that he goes through before practice, a pre-practice routine, a post-practice routine. He's a self-made individual, and he's very, very driven. And that's what he's been able to do is he's really worked his craft each and every day beyond what has been expected and required of him. So, Jim, what's been the mood of the team just getting back to work? Has, have they benefited, do you think, from the time off between the bowl and the Vanderbilt? I do. I think, you know, be, being able to, you know, get back into academics, finish strong academically, kind of get your minds right, kind of refresh your, your body and your mind uh, from a long season. We've been through a lot uh, all season long. And so I think being able to kind of rejuvenate a little bit, and I've seen uh, very, very good leadership. I've liked the energy and the effort so far in practice, but is it good enough yet? No, it's not good enough. And tomorrow we have to have a much better practice than we had today. But again, you're building a foundation, you're building a work capacity, getting back into the old prep, and I've liked so far what I've seen. Would you talk a little bit about the preparation before you get to yeah, well, we always have a philosophy. We want our game plan in place before we break for the holidays. We'll give our players a couple days off and let them go home and be with their families. But we want to have the game plan in place before they go home. And then obviously when we go to the bowl site, all it is is we're fine-tuning the game 